a freilich in Chanukah. Let's make freilich with Chanukah Torah. <clears throat> when I say Chanukah Torah, I mean not just halacha lemaisa, the regular shilas, where to light, when to light. I mean gishmakas vekas. See how many we are maspic today. Gishmakas vekas, which have tremendous ramifications, really not just in Chanukah and Kol Tarkula, but we'll see how they pertain specifically to Chanukah. <clears throat> it's Yadua. I think it's very famous, especially over here, amongst the Loimdim, the Talmud Chachomim, that come every week. The famous uh, Shiloh of Reb Chaim Ibrisk. What was the Shiloh of Reb Chaim? Reb Chaim got an esrig. It's how they, this is how they say the story. I'll, I'll tell you how I see it in the Kuntris Mayadim of Tyrus Brisk on the 25th page. <clears throat> There's a story that he had two esrigim, Reb Chaim. And I have not forgotten that it's Hanukkah. That's Hashem. The Reb Chaim had two Esregim. One was for Meretz Yisrael, which was Vade Kosher. But Sekik Nitshain, it wasn't such a nice Esreg. And he had another one from Corpo. 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 It's Corpo, if I'm not mistaken, is a Greek island, if I'm not mistaken. And this second Esreg from Corfo Corfu. was a... How do you say it? Corfu? Corfu. Corfu. Thank you. Corfu. So he had this other Esreg from Corfu, which was a beautiful asterisk, absolutely stunning. And if it would have been kosher, it would have been absolutely mahudar. The only question was, <clears throat> is there was a question on the yichas of the zayd of this asterisk. Was it a kosher asterisk or not? If it was kosher, it was far nicer than the Eretz Yisrael Dika asterisk. Was it kosher? That was the big shaila. So Rechaim had two asterisk, one vaday kosher, not so pretty, and one beauty, but maybe not kosher. If it would be kosher, then no question, you would want to take that one. But <clears throat> it was a suffix on the yichus. Suffix if it was a, a morkev. So Rav Chaim, Kedua. The question was, if Adi could take both, when you're in brisk, you could take 15. <clears throat> what did Rav David tell us 20 years ago, 25 years ago? He said, he doesn't understand American Shabbat What's this business when it comes to Parsha Zohar? 15 parts of is 20 parts of Zohar. All you have to do is listen seven, eight times. You don't have to have 15, 20. But when it comes to an Esreg, what's the problem? You can make 20 Esregim. Why not? <clears throat> but Rav Chaim had a different problem. On, well, on, Verlech, on which Esreg do you make the bracha? Do you make the bracha on the beauty? Or do you make the bracha on the not so beauty, but Vade Kosher? Rav Chaim Kayedua made the bracha on the Suffolk puzzle, I guess on the Corfu, if I'm not mistaken, I got it right this time, Corfu. He made it on the Corfu esrig, which was <clears throat> the beautiful esrig, but Suffolk puzzle. And then after he finished with that esrig, he put it down, and he was Mekayim afterward, which there is the esrig. What was the cheshben of Reb Chaim? Reb Chaim is a simple cheshben. Reb Chaim's cheshben was, you get one chance, in essence, Rabbi Yisai, to do the mitzvah. In essence, you can only do the mitzvah one time. So now, if I did the mitzvah on the puzzle, <clears throat> so then, excuse me, if I do the mitzvah on the kosher, but it's not mahudr, so then that's it. You yait say the mitzvah, and the yait say in a way where it's not mahudr. Now, what do you want to do? You want to take the Ari Tisrael Dekasrik, which isn't so nice, you yait say the mitzvah. And now what? Now you want to come afterward and take the 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 the, the suffix kosher, which is a beauty and a mahudr. But Rabbi Isai, once you were yaitse the mitzvah, you can't do a hider after you yaitse the mitzvah. You finished the mitzvah already. It's true. <clears throat> the mitzvah wasn't such a beauty, but you were yaitse. That one was a vade kosher. So once you finished being yaitse the mitzvah, how could you come back and do the mitzvah a second time? How could you take lulav a second time? How could you take etzrik a second time? Person finish the mitzvah. He finished the mitzvah. Can you imagine a person, he davens uh, Shemone Asrei. It wasn't such a beauty. And now he says, oh, but this time I'm going to have a lot of kavana. You can go and daven again. You're already I'd say There's a whole concept maybe of a Shemone Asrei. <clears throat> of an adava. Today we don't do nevdavas. The person had a Kriya Satoira. The Kriya Satoira wasn't so great. He, every Mitzrayim and Mitzrayim in the world, he botched up. No, afterward, we're going to come and do it again. How could you do it again? You were say already Kriya Satoira. It's done. What, what mashmoyas does it have? As a meila, tainet reb chayim. If I take the vaday kosher, which is not so mahudr, 
So then I'm Yaitzi the mitzvah. So then afterward, I'm going to go and take the 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 the, the beauty and the mahudar, and even al that it'll be kosher. Wonderful. But you were Yaitzi already, so you can't be Yaitzi a second time. Mashain Kane, if the Allah is, excuse me, Mashain Kane, if you take the beauty, which is the suffix kosher. So first of all, maybe I was Yaitse. Great. And even if I wasn't Yaitse, I'll quickly take the other one, the Vade Kosher, which isn't so Mahodar. But at least there's a chance that I was Yaitse with the Mahodar. Elamai, what are you worried about? I have sick between the Brocha and the taking of the Lulav. What's the half sick? I'm all Isaac. I won't speak. <clears throat> I'm all Isaac. And that's what Reb Chaim did. He took the Vadai beauty, which was Suffolk Puzzle, and he afterward took the, excuse me, he took the Vadai beauty, which is Suffolk Puzzle, and then afterward he took the Vadai Kosher, because there's a chance he wasn't Jaitse. That Lechaira would seem Pasha. This is also brought, the same idea in the Orchus Rabbeinu and Chavik Beis, in the 294th page in Oisid Gimel, the stipler said when you have two Israel Gim, one is Mohadr and one is the Suffolk in the Kashras, and it's the Suffolk in the Kashras, and the second one is Kasher, <clears throat> and not Mohadr, which is Maisin because Sukkot, Rabbi said. I think a lot of us have these Shilas. He said, take the one by the Bracha, which is the Mohadr, and then afterward you take the one, which is the Vadai Kasher, and he said it's not called the ka- a, 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 a half sick. <clears throat> Rav Nochem, Rav Nochem Pertzavis, the great Rosh Hashiva Demir, in the Sefer, Nezer Arosh, in Chelek Beis, in Simen Chav Aleph, he said, this Svara is Poshit. Svara Zup Shuta, Kokach, ain't Sarach Lezach, Ross Reb Chaim. Why do you have to bring in Reb Chaim Salvechik to say such a Poshit as Zach? Why do you have to bring in Reb Chaim? It sounds like it's some incredible Chiddush, of a, a brisker Chiddush, some Salvechik Chiddush. What's that about bringing the Reb Chaim? It's a tougher Pashit. <clears throat> How could you be Yaitse in Mitzvah if you're already previously be Yaitse? So, Mela, if you want to take a chance to be Yaitse in the, the Shens Teufen and the nicest Teufen, then Vashtay you have to take first the Mahodr, which is Suffolk Kosher, and then afterwards you'll take the Vade Kosher. And this seems to be very simple. That's what it seems. Mm. But this Rabbi Yisai, <clears throat> we're going to see today, number one, in Svar, it's not so Pashit. And number two, we're going to see in Makairis. It's not so posh. <clears throat> and Rabbi Sang, the nafkamina we'll see is a nafkamina in Kolator Kula. Specifically, it's a very big nafkamina today in our Tseinu HaKadoshah, Kiputa today. Today on day one, on day two, on day three, the days, the days of Hanukkah, <clears throat> the Hainti Giyantif. It's an extremely negayish shayla in Eretz Yisrael. What's the shayla? So, it's a dua. There's a tremendous makhlaik. Is this, I won't go into as much. I'll just bring you in as much as necessary for the shayla. It's Yadua, I think in years past, we were actually able to speak about it. It's Yadua, the very big machlaik is, where do you light the Eretz Yisrael? There's a, uh, Rabbi, Rabbi uh, Alter has a whole song, some light in the window, some light by the door. <clears throat> what's this? What's the amkis of this niggin? Do you light by the window? Do you light by the door? So, when I grew up in the Hain, in Flappish, we lit in the window. <clears throat> what's the pshat? What's the pshat? Why we light in the window? Simply, the emphasis is, is that in Chutzlar, it's the Iker Hadlaka, it's really considered a Shasakana. Again, today, the Baruch Hashem, the Yoyim, don't cause us that type of trouble. But if everyone starts lighting outside, it could come back to that type of trouble. <clears throat> and certainly, there was a time in our history when the Goyim definitely caused that type of trouble. And therefore, in essence, there's a, 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 a tsura that the Gemara brings down for the mitzvah, which allows for this Shasakana, which is to light inside Menich on the Shulchan Udayah. As I state the Gemara, <coughs> as I state the Gemara, the Shaila is once we're lighting inside. So the Shabura says, look, if there's any way you could light inside and get some type of a piercing for the outside, it's very nice. And that's what you're supposed to do. And that really became the minig when I grew up. I think everybody lit in the window. <clears throat> Maybe today, some do light by the door. I'm not familiar. But in Chutzlarts, you light in the window. But at Sim, you really could light in the inside. Because Chutzlar, the lighting is for the inside. That's why, for example, in America, you know, when I grew up, they said, no, when do you light? You light when Tati comes home from work. What's the shot? Because bad sim, there's no time specifically because you're not trying to get the chutz. Now, I say that very liberally. Avada, l'chatchila, a person should light by Yiddishkiya, by Tzais, the chulite. But there's a lot more mokim for a kula to light shpeter, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, whatever it is, <clears throat> simply because the lighting is really for the b'nei bayis. The lighting is for the house. It's a different type of mitzvah. 
And when you read the Gemara, that's Kimat, what it says. The Gemara says the mitzvah of Ner Hanukkah is to light by the door. It says the Gemara, B'Shaz Kana, what do you do? You light it on the table and that's a Ginuk shine. So in Chutzlar, it's till today, why aren't they lighting it on the door? So the place can take on because we're afraid that it can go back to a Shasa Kana. <clears throat> and therefore, we light inside. I, when we light inside, why do they do by the window? Of course, like the place can say, the Chatechila, do some type of a piercing for the outside. But if I ask you, whom are you lighting for in Chutzlar, it's the answer is you're lighting for the inside. And therefore, like I said, you could light late uh, if a person wants to know. If you could light after the Masiba, there's certainly a Makam to be Mako. Avada, Chatechila, you do it, Shkiyat Seitz, whatever your time is, Bechula. Because the mitzvah is for the inside. Mm. But in Eretz Yisrael, Rezaycha, Bog Hashem, to do the mitzvah, can feed the tzura of the mitzvah the way it was in the time of Chazal. <clears throat> when you read in the Shulchan Aruch and the Gemara, the Shulchan Aruch is written in Eretz Yisrael. It says, where does one light? It says, Al Pesach Abayis. If he has a door of the house, leads into the street, light in the Pesach of the Abayis. <clears throat> then the Gemara says, what happens if he has a says the Shulchan Aruch, a chotzer in front of his house. is some type of a, a courtyard in front of his house. So the way that Toysis learns the Gemara, yes, light on the outside of the courtyard. Light all the way, <coughs> as close as possible to the Rishas Rabbim as possible. That's the sheet of Toysis. And the Shulchan Aruch passes like that, which means it's a case closed. And that's why if you come to Eretz Yisrael today, you'll see in Yerushalayim, certainly, many people lighting on <coughs> The outside of their have they have the, the, the dira, they have their apartment, and then they have a stairwell, <clears throat> sometimes a little bit of a parking lot, etc. And they're lighting on the closest place to Rishat Rabbim. There's a, a walkway and whatnot, and they're wa- they're lighting all the way as close as possible <clears throat> to Rishat Rabbim. Why? Because the objective of the mitzvah in Chutzlar is, is different than in Eretz Yisrael. In Eretz Yisrael, the objective is not for the house. It's be mefarsim from something which is considered yours, some part, some rishus which is yours. Be mefarsim from your rishus to the rishus of Rabbim, the the nice Hanukkah. <clears throat> According to that, that's why you'll see many people lighting by the door of the chotzer, by the door of the bottom of the apartment buildings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This, however, is a big machlek. It's for two reasons. Number one, Rashi argues. Rashi sheet is is that. You always light, not by the foot of the chatzar. The chatzar is not enough considered connected to you. You always light by the door <clears throat> of your apartment, of your house. According to that, I can't be lighting at the downstairs of my apartment building. That's one. Okay, but that's Machlech. It's Rishayim. That's Kipaskin, not like Rashi. But the Chazanish came along with another reason not to light at the bottom of the stairwell at the bottom of the apartment building, at the bottom of the chatzar, at the end of the chatzar, the chazanish said the chatzar, <coughs> the chazal we're talking about is not the chatzar that we have today. Chazanish said that the chazal we're talking about a chatzar, like we find in Baba Basra, <coughs> they would do many of their shimushim in the chatzar, they would do their not just laundry, they would eat out in the chatzar, they'd spend most of their days in the chatzar. Whoever remembers the old bungalow colony, they used to say, as ma'arbit, you work 10 months a year like a Puerto Rican so that you could live like one for two months a year. Whoever remembers the old bungalow colonies, I don't know today what's going on, <clears throat> but in the old bungalows, that's what it was, Rabbi Yisai. Inside, you had to share a bed with a couple of mosquitoes or a couple thousand mosquitoes, and you dive into Hashem that it shouldn't be mashiv v'ruach and Hashem, because if it rains, you had to stay inside. And everything was outside. Breakfast, lunch, supper, everything was outside. So Mela, the olden day chatzar of Chazal was much like that. So therefore, says the Chazanish, in the olden days when the chatzar was mamish and ikr shimosh, so that was really your house. It was a part of your house. It was your living room in essence. So therefore, light at the end of that chatzar, and that's called your house, and that's called your being mefarsimit from your house, from your chatzar. <clears throat> Today, the Chazani says our chatzeris are like a regular Rishas Rabbim. It's more like a Mavui in the time of Chazal. It's not a chatzar of that type of a nature. And therefore the Chazani held, don't light on the door of the chatzar today because you don't have a chatzar. He agrees the Psak is like Taisis, but we don't have a chatzar. So where do you light? According to the Chazani, if you're under 20 Amis, <coughs> light in the window. <coughs> you're a Darbaliya, light in the window. If you have a private entrance to Rishas Rabbim, Light the private entrance or just a rabbin, and then they'll see it from the street through the chutzner. No problem. If you're above 20 amis, the chutzner said, No problem. Light by the door of your apartment. If you're on the fourth floor, you light by the door of your apartment. 
<coughs> this is a It's enough information for us to go into the grace of Shiloh. By us, there's a grace of Shiloh. So now, the Minig Yushalayim, Briskarov, the great Goinim, Rosh Hashanah, and Rebel Yashiv, and the many, many Tariyid and Yushalayim held, you could light, at the, you're supposed to light at the end of the Chatzar. That's where you light. <clears throat> you light at the end of the Chatzar, and if you light at the end of the Chatzar, that's the Bikr Mitzvah, and that's the Mahudra Dikka way, and that's the Tzura that you're supposed to be lighting. Okay? However, the Chazanish said, no. If the Chazanish said, if you light there, you're not Yaitzai. It's like lighting in the middle of, a str- of the street. It's like lighting on the, you know, on top of your car. <clears throat> you're not being Yaitzai. Oops. So, says the Chazanish, don't light at the end of the Chatzar. Light by the door, light by the window. Okay. If I light in the door of my Chatzar, the, the end of the Chatzar, the Chazanish says, I'm not Yaitzai. If I light in the door by my apartment or my window, so these other Geoinim, Shlomo Zalman, Rav Yashiv, the Biskarov, Mistama, and I say this with a heavy heart because this itself is a big Maglaikis, <clears throat> Mistama, you are Yaitzai. You're just not getting the Iker Spitz mitzvah of being Mepharis in the Nais in the most effective way to Rosh Hashanah So now I have a choice. I could do like the Chazanish and Vadai be Yaitzai because the Chazanish for sure, that's what I'm supposed to do. And even according to Rav Shlomo Zalman, the Biskarov, Bidiyevid your Yaitzai, because safe, safe, you're in there. And Saif Saif, especially if it's by a window, it's doing a piercum. So I could light a window. I could light by the window. The Chazini holds yes. And the Brisker holds, holds that you're right side the other. <clears throat> That's one option. Or I could light by the Chatzar, where it's the most mother. If it's the right place, it's definitely the most mother. Even the Chazini agrees that it would be the most mother. The only thing is the Chazini Shal did not right side. What's this? It seems to be the Esther of Reb Chaim. It seems to be Mamish the same Shaila. Should I light? In the now, what are you going to say? So do both. You can do both. Great, I'll do both. But where am I going to make the bracha? This is the answer, Gerb Chaim. <clears throat> if I make the bracha on the vaday kosher, dying by the window, so then very nice. But then if afterward I go and light at the edge of the chotzer, so then once you're mekayim the mitzvah, but you say you can't be mekayim the mitzvah tveitemol. How could you mekayim the mitzvah a second time? So therefore, it would seem that the eitz would be and the chayra. This is what Reb Chaim Kinnira would tell us. That l'chayr, where should you light? <clears throat> you should light on the Pesach of the Chatzar, at the edge of the apartment building, or the end of the walkway, right by the street, and then quickly run back to your apartment and make the bracha on the edge of the street, and then quickly run back to your apartment and make the bracha on the window, and, 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 and light in the window based on the bracha from the Chatzar. And that would be l'chayr, satisfy Reb Chaim. Make the bracha on the vadai kosher, on the, excuse me, on the, the hider, because otherwise you won't be able to be Mekayim the Mitzvah. Once I was, I lit the Menorah, how can I be Mekayim the Mitzvah again? <coughs> this L'chayra is what should come out. But this Rabbi Yisai, now we're going to don, uh, number one, in Svarah we're going to don, and number two, we're going to don in Mekayris, and then we're going to go case by case throughout various cases in Shas, be it Sukkah, be it Mezuzah, be it Sriyasa Oymer, be it Hanukkah, <coughs> kiss Shoifer, and see how we come out on this. So it's very interesting, Rabbi Yisai, is that first of all, I guess first always you have to go with Svara. First and foremost, in Svara, is it so Pashit? We keep saying that this seems to be a Svara Pshuta, that you can't be Makayim Hidr after Makayim the Mitzvah. The truth is, is that in Brisk, this was clearly the Messiah. <clears throat> Reb Chaim, his great illustrious father, the Beis Alevi, and Chelek Beis, and Mem Zayin, he says, Vizer, and then there's Damino, another Lulav, person had a Lulav, and then a nicer Lulav came his way. Does he have a Chiyav to take the nicer one? Because even though when you have two in front of you, you would have been Chiyav to take the nicer one. But now, you heard a Yotzeh. There ain't a love, Chiyav shall have mitzvah. There's no more Chiyav. So in what way are you being misnoy in the mitzvah. So it seemed like that's the past, the base of Levi. You could say, why is the base of Levi being being misupik? Didn't Rav Nachum Pritzav say it's such a simple svar, you don't have to be misyach, it's just Rav Chaim. And Rav Itzala, the Piyitzchok and Chedek Beis, Simen Lamed, Deber Matzlo Be'ikr, Mishanot the Lulav Kosher. And after it, same story. And this Damen Loi, a nicer Lulav. Efsher, even in Yerts, if you want to be machmer himself, maybe it's Klum, you already right say. The second time, what are you doing? You're not you're right to say anything. But why are they clearing? Why are they saying Efsher? 
Just say, with the Sakina Chavifa, like we say. <clears throat> the Pashat, you can't be Yaitzai once you're Yaitzai. Here, Rabbi Yisai, there's an incredible Ksav Soifer in our Chaim Simon Kuflamit. Hey, he says the impossible. Rabbi Nachum said it's the impossible. And the Ksav Soifer seems to say the impossible. Mishabedach, ala Esreg, Shayna Mufcher. If he made a Brach on an Esreg, which isn't a Mohudr, and then he got a Mohudr that came his way, Vadai Mitzvah Shiyach Savitzlena. Ha! What Rav Nachum Pertzavit said is vadai poshit, that you vadai aren't going to get a mitzvah once you did the hider, once you're already, you say, excuse me, once you did the kosher, once you're ready to the mitzvah, you can't get the mitzvah again with a hider. On that, the Ksav Saifa says vadai poshit fakir. Mary Dikim Achleik is the Ksav Saifa says, why not? <clears throat> How do you understand this? Chayra, the Rav Nachum is right. Chayra, I was here to say the mitzvah and we're done. No. Chayra, Kanira, hider in a mitzvah is some. It's a different type of mitzvah, perhaps. I must admit, <clears throat> in an esrig, it, it's 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 taka mamish a reason of chiddush. We'll see in a minute. In other places, it's mamish maybe perhaps less of a chiddush. But upon him, the ksav seifer lemaizes says the absolute impossible. And even the base of Levi and Rabitzla didn't say push it. It's no question like Reb Chaim. It seems to be that it's not so push it. It seems to be that once I was mekayim the mitzvah, it seems to be <clears throat> that. A hidr in the mitzvah is to continue doing the mitzvah in a more mode to go even. Kanira, that's uh, licked in the mitzvah is the ability to take the lulav and you take it, your yaitse, but akaparnam, if you could do it mohudr, it's still nekshav akiyam. I, I must admit, I don't understand it. I understand Reb Nachim, but the grace of Ambatla Daiti to these great Gedalim that did understand the other tzad. <clears throat> Once there is another tzad, so now we really have to don Rabbi Yisai, because until now, Look, we said we have no choice. We have to take the asterisk, which is the mohadr, because otherwise you're never going to get the hidr. I, there was a hefsik over here. There was a hefsik between the asterisk and the second asterisk. So we said, yeah, it's a, hef- it's a hefsik, but that hefsik doesn't outweigh doing the mitzvah potentially in a mohadr dick away. And it's not such a hefsik. <clears throat> but now that the Ksav is telling us, no, you could do hidr even after you did the mitzvah. So now we have to don really on the severity of this hefsik. Because if this half-stick is really a big half-stick, then we'll do like the Ksav Saifer. We'll take the Vade Kosher, and then after we'll take the Vade, the, the, the Safek uh, Kosher, which is Mohadr. Same thing with the Menorah. We'll light the Menorah upstairs, where your Vade Yoyt say, in your apartment. And then afterward, we'll run downstairs to the edge of the Chatzar, <clears throat> And we'll light the menorah, and we'll and 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 you will get the mitzvah without having a hefsig on the bracha. So so what's the severity of this hefsig over here? Rabbi Yisai, I ask you to turn to Muradika Rashi in Erevin. Over there is going on the Gemara in Erevin and Dafnun. <clears throat> the Gemara in Erevin and Dafnun says that it's talking about. We know that there's a din of Meiser Behema, and the din of Meiser Behema is that you have to have you have ten animals, and the tenth one. You call it a Siri, a Siri Kaidesh. <coughs> There's all types of fakes in the Gemara. Gemara Bechayres, Gemara is in different places. <coughs> Gemara Bamatsia, <coughs> Renervin, where an animal goes through. And sometimes there's a confusion if it's the ninth animal, the tenth animal, the tenth animal, the eleventh animal. <coughs> and sometimes there's confusion in what he says. Sometimes he calls the 11th animal the Asiri and the 10th animal the, the 11th animal. So if you hear the Gemara is downing on one such case, and the Gemara says, I'm a Rava, what happens if both of them came out at the exact same time? Two animals, 9 and 10, came out at the exact, excuse me, 10 and 11, came out at the exact same time. <clears throat> and now he went and he said, uh, Asiri. He, he just screamed out Asiri, because one of them is for sure Asiri. 10 and 11 came out at once, and he just screamed Asiri. Says the Gemara, Asiri the Achadasar Muravan Sevazet. Zog the Gemara. So now we say it's 10 and 11 are mixed. Kloimar. One of them is the Meister, is Asiri. And one of them is Achadasar. What's Achadasar? Because he did Makdashit. So one of them will be Meister Behema. And one of them will be Ashlam. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so now you have two animals. And one you'll bring as a Meister. And one you'll bring as a Shlam. What's the difference between a Meister and a Shlam? So here, Meiser has very different dinim than a shlamim. A Meiser behema doesn't require smicha and tnufa and the chadayma. And a shlamim requires 
smicha, mit snufa, mit chaz, mit shayik, mit ala gitza. As a medla, very good. One bra, a korban, you're going to have to bring, in essence, as a shlamim, and one as a meiser. Now, it's not such a big problem, because, look, technically, all I got to do is, I, it's kimat the same dinim. I just have to make sure I do a, a tnufa and a smicha on both behemoths. One of them, it's behemoths, a waste of time, and you can clear it's mishtamish bekadshim and whatever, okay. <clears throat> but one of them, it's really a meiser, which does not require a tnufa and a smicha. And one of them is going to be a shlamim, which does. Okay, so we'll do it. In order not to have a, a sekis, we'll do it. What does it hurt? So that's what you're supposed to do. And as I state in Rashi, Rashi says, Both of them need a tnufa and a chaz and a shayk and a smicha. Come to gain Rashi and he says, fabulous words. <laughs> How many places does Rashi's lave speak in all the 2,712 Daphim Mashas? I mean, the heart of the Kant Klal Yisrael is speaking right now. <clears throat> Rashi's lave says, don't make a bracha. The heart of Klal Yisrael says, don't make a bracha. In other words, you know that on a, a Tznufa, you say, Hashem, Nishanam, Mitzvah, Yitzvah, 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 on a Smicha, a la Smicha, you make a bracha. Says Rashi, can't make a bracha over here. Why not? Says Rashi, what do you mean? Maybe the first animal is taka, a shlamim, and then good. Then your bracha is chal on this. And the second one is a waste of a smicha. But maybe the first animal is a miser. And therefore, I said a check. It's one of the It's one of the smoich. That's a miser. That's a shlamim. <clears throat> so I made a bracha. Now, I made a bracha, and I was soimich. And I'm soimich on miser. Soimich on miser is a waste of time. So your bracha is a half sick. Says Rashi, but in a minute from now, you're going to go and be Saimach on the Shlomim, which is real. So it's Rashi, it's a Hefzik. Says, uh, since Rashi, since it's a Hefzik, it's a Brach of Atala. Leiv Oimer, Libi Oimer, says the Eilig of Rashi, Ein Mavarech, Alatnu Vatzmir, Loilave Brach of Atala. It's a Brach of Atala. Because a smicha is only required on a Shlomim. Oibazoi, now we can ask Mamash Grace Shaila, and this Shaila, <clears throat> at the end of the Sefer, Nefesh Chaya, the Chuvis Nefesh Chaya, Rabbi Liyaza Silver, Zechot Sadik Levrocha, asked this question on Reb Chaim. He asked that Luchoyra Rashi is against Reb Chaim. <clears throat> Where's Rashi against Reb Chaim? Because Rashi seems to say that when you have to cheshbin in the Hefzik, so Rashi, the Hefzik is something that's going to be such a serious thing, we're going to lose the bracha. I say, Bezai, you have a problem when it comes to an esrig. How are you taking the esrig, which is the mahudr, and doing a hefsik? Right, right now, it's just mafsik between the bracha and the mitzvah, because on the tzad, that the esrig, which is the mahudr, is possible, you were mafsik. You did a waste of time. You have to do the maisa immediately. You have to do the maisa on the esrig. <clears throat> the kosher. As the mela, kimoi that we found that by a maisa, we say, we're not going to let you make a bracha. Because of the half sick, what's the problem? I'm going to be Simon a second later. I'll be Simon on the real one, even if I'm wrong. Is this your Says Rashi, no, you can't. Rashi is machshiv the half sick, so much so that he tells you you can't make a bracha. So when you go back to our case, lechayra bein the gabi the neiros chanukah bein the gabi the esrig, you got to make the bracha on the vade kosher. <clears throat> and I guess you got to be Simon on the ksav seifer, and say afterward I'll try to do the hitter. If it works, it works. If not, not. But I have no right to make a half sick. And potentially lose the bracha. This was the cash of Rebbe Silver in the truth of Nefesh Chaim Reb Chaim. Reb Chaim had a chavrusa with the rugged shover. As a matter of fact, somebody uh, once uh, came to the rugged shover and he asked him, rugged shover asked him, where is he learning? He told him he's learning by Voloshin, by Reb Chaim. <clears throat> he told him, no, let me hear the, what he's saying. Let me hear what Reb Chaim is saying. And he went on to tell him a chiddush that Reb Chaim said. And the Raghat Shavar said, I told that to Reb Chaim 50 years ago when we were seven years old learning by his father, the Beis Alevi. <clears throat> I see that now he finally understands it. So the Raghat Shavar, the Chavrus of Reb Chaim, asked on Reb Chaim from this Rashi in Erevin. They told this chiddush to the Raghat Shavar. And of an art, the Raghat Shavar said, No, Rashi, Erevin, Tafnun. <clears throat> so Chaira, this is the Kasha. Chaira. <laughs> What's the mice on this shayla? 
Is there any way to answer this, Shiloh? Kalei Ratzah Shtarka Taina and Rav Chaim. So Rav Pesai, today I'm going to tell you two types of Mahalachim. We'll see, maybe we'll break it down to a third type of Mahalach, but two types of Mahalach. One Mahalach is to explain that really Rashi and Erevin had the supremacy. <clears throat> the heart of Rashi is the Iker, and that means, Bamis, you always have to worry about the Hefzik. And there's something special about the Esther of Rav Chaim. That's one type of Mahalach. I'll explain in a moment. There's another type of Mahalach that say the exact opposite. Really, the Pashtis is like Rav Chaim. And that Yavada, you do first the bracha. Don't worry about the hefsek. Make it on the mahodar. And there's something special about the sugi and erevin, which is a yotzei a, a an exception to the rule. What I mean, two ways to learn. One way you can learn is that really Reb Chaim will agree, <clears throat> and really in every case in halacha, and that'll say a lot of the cases we'll talk about today, whether it's Hanukkah, mezuzah, kis shayfer, really bamis. You always have to worry about the hefsek, and Rashi's lave is certainly correct. And you're not allowed to make a situation of where you make a bracha and then mafsik between the bracha and the mitzvah. And therefore, technically, it should have come out also by Esrig. You should make the bracha on the Vade Kasha. But Esrig is different. Why? <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is brought uh, B'Shem, the Briskarov, the Tzitzel Yazer, and Chelik Vav, and Simil Lamites, by Yud. He said this, I think, also that uh, he brings over there Rav Hersh Pesach and Rav Abramsky and Grace Segoinim that discussed the Shaila, but they came out with a Mahalach that the Dalit Minim is Andrish. Why? Because since by the Dalit Minim there's a Halacha in Tafish and Aleph based on the Nish Mishnah and Menachis that you could be Yoytse the Mitzvah <clears throat> In other words, I could take a Lulav, make the Brach on the Lulav, and then after the Hadas, and then after the Arava, then after the Esrit. And you could still be Yoytse. As a Mela, a base, I think about it. When Reb Chaim took the Yasrig, he had in his hand a Lulav already. Now he made the Bracha Shagri Shalom, his voice was one on Latino's Lulav. So the Bracha was Chal on the Lulav. What are you worried about? There's a half sick, he's taking a Mohudrik Esrig. <clears throat> and then afterward, he's going to go and take a Kosher Esrig, but maybe it was a Puzzle Esrig. No problem, Reb Isai, because the Bracha was Chal on the Lulav, because it's not less Sinisht Erga. If a person would take the bracha, make the bracha on the lulav, and then after the hadas, and then after the rav, and then after the asrik. I said, but I really bad, Mr. Chaim agrees. Everywhere else in Kol Terkula, there's no question if you have a hefsik, you make a bracha on the vade kosher, because otherwise it's going to be a hefsik. But Masha'in came when it comes to a lulav, there it's different, because there the bracha is chal on the lulav. <clears throat> so therefore, very good. And that would explain Reb Chaim. That's one way of answering. If you go like that, so we'll see many of the questions we're going to come today are going to come out that you always have to make the bracha on the Vade Kosher. We go with Rashi narrative. Now, before I continue, this uh, teretz is based on a bit of a hanacha. We're saying over here that when you make a, when you take a lulav, you can take a lulav zeh or zeh, and therefore the bracha is chal. But you should know, Rabbi, say, even that is not the chatchilah. <clears throat> Even that is not lechatchila. So, so why would Reb Chaim have done that? It's also not lechatchila to take a lulav, make the bracha on the lulav, and then after we take an asterisk. But this Rabbi I must tell you, even though I saw Moshe Sternbach <clears throat> uh, asked this question, but uh, it's interesting. In Moshe Sternbach said, "Mayad muzmanim and chelik beis and simen kufiut ches dibra maskel vadayin." But I saw interesting in the chelkas yoyav in Archaim simen lamed aleph. He has an interesting sad to say that even if you say you're not allowed to take a lulav and then a hadas and then a, a rava, because that is not lechatchila, but he has it sad to say that if you take the lulav, the hadas, the rava together, which were kapo tomorrow together, and then afterward take the asterisk, that might not be bidiyavid. <clears throat> it could be the only thing that's bidiyavid is taking a lulav and then a hadas and then an arava. That's bidiyavid. But if you take the lulav, hadas, and arava together and then Afterward, you take that, make the bracha, and then afterward, take the asterisk, that's not the oven. So if you that, Rabbi Isai, it would make a lot of sense for Pchayim. Therefore, according to this Malach, Rashi is the Iker, you never make a Seikim. Lulav is shiny, because the bracha was chal on my Lulav, and then even if the asterisk wasn't a good asterisk, so I could take it afterward. <clears throat> that's according to this Malach. Is Rabbi Isai, Lefi this Malach, I'll ask you Shiloh. Let's say I have two Lulavim, one of them is a beauty, but it's a suffix kosher. And one of them is 
and ugly, but it's vade kasher. What's the example of this? So the stipler speaks about a case, very diamond to this, the case of a knepel, a lula, which is a knepel. Those that hold it a knepel is kosher. They hold it's mamish moder and it's lechatchila and it's great. <clears throat> the the, the rosh hold, it's a mohoder, it's even more mohoder. The problem is the ron holds that a knepel take a lulav is possible. So now I have something which is a vaday kosher. Excuse me, I have something which is a suffix. Well, I have a lulav, let's say, which is vaday kosher, but not as nice as a knepel. Or I have a knepel, which on one side is mamish, you know, it's got a little uh, hook nose over there. On the one side, it's mamish, mamish, according to the Russia, beauty, but it might not be kosher according to the Ran. So the fee, what you just heard, this will mamish be enough kanina. Here, Reb Chaim would not have taken, if this is the love of this, then Reb Chaim wouldn't have taken first the lulav, which was the safe kosher vade mohudr. He would say, no, give me the vade kosher. It was only by asterisk because here, but said, when I make the bracha, I'm saying, so you got to make sure you're taking a lulav. Only over there, where you're anyways taking a lulav, so the bracha will be chal on the lulav, which was kosher. And therefore, afterward, if you take a asterisk, <clears throat> even if the asterisk wasn't good, but it's fine, you'll take it afterward, the one that's good. And this rabbi said, is miyashiv really a stira in the Orchus Rabbeinu? Because in the Orchus Rabbeinu, in Chelik Beis, in Ahmed Reish Lamed Aleph, he it says that Reb, the, the stipler, when he had such a situation by the Lulavim, Echad was a Tiyoimis Ishara, and Echad was a Kotz of Roisha Tiyoimis Aikof, if it was a Knepel. So he brings down in 1963, stipler told him that a Lulavim Tiyoimis, if it's a Knepel, I'd rather not make a Bracha. That's what he says. So he brought in over here, Lokach Bibnoyer Chankin Yaske, Lulav Yasher, and he wanted to make a Bracha. So he brings. He would make the bracha on the straight lulav, and then afterward he took the second one. Now that one, Taka, I see now, that's going to be a stira. I was reading in the wrong one. In Chalik Bays, in page 294, there was an Uvda by Mar, Ki Mar Shnei Lulavin, Echad Yashar Ve'echad Kafav Parayshai. Amali Mar, Loyem Evarach Mishum, Shecholkin Bezad. No, no, it works out good. I'm sorry. It does work out. It stems. Reb Chaim brings down from his father, the stipler, in two different times, in 1963, and other times, he would always make the bracha on the Vadai Kosher. And then afterward, he would take the knepel. That works very well with what we said. Now, Chayr, that's a stira <clears throat> to a different stipler, which is on the same page. By an esrig, by an esrig, he said that if you'd have two esrigim, you take the vadai kosher after. Take first the sape kosher, which is moder. Has it shtim? By lula, if you took the vadai kosher. By esrig, he didn't take the vadai kosher. He took the sape kosher. The teretz is according to this. It's kevaldik. Really yelled that in Kol Gula, you must always worry that there should not be a hefsik like Rashi and Erevin. Aye. <clears throat> What's by Esrig? Esrig is different because Esrig, you're already yaitzed the Brach on the Lulav. Now, if this mile is the Emesar by sign, so then it'll come out that by the Chanukah Shaila, we're going to tell a person where should you make the Bracha. We'll tell him the Chayra, make the Bracha with Yavada Yoytze, which is by the window, and then afterward go down to the Chatzar. Now I'm going to tell you a whole different malach in Rashi and Erevin. Till now, Rashi and Erevin was a cloud all over. <clears throat> and therefore, all the other mitzvahs, you got to worry about the hefzik. Now I'm going to tell you the opposite. Really, the pashtis is like we saw by Reb Chaim. And that if you have a suffix hider, always do the hid. If you have a suffix kosher and a hider, do the hider first. And don't worry about the hefzik. <clears throat> and that'll be everywhere. And when it's going to come to the Hanukkah Menorah, light it downstairs, light it outside like Revel Yashiv, light it the, with the most piercing and the Mahudu take away. I the Hefzik? No. The case of Rashi is a, a specific case, a very, very specific case, and has nothing to do with the rest of Kol Tarkula. And this Teretz of Isai, <clears throat> I see that it's brought in a few places. As a matter of fact, it's brought in the Hart Svi, in Erechaim, of Simin Lamed Hay in Dibra Maschal Velchayra, in Simin Lamed Vav in Dibra Maschal Ulam. The Artsvi himself brings this in Menachas and Daf Lamed Vav. <clears throat> this Mahalich 
the Sefer Zer Yaakov in our Chaim Simon Lamedal brings down. And I saw so Gesund and Stark sein Rabbi Avram Gerwitz so sein Gesund and Stark the Great Rosh Hashiva of Gateshead. He is brought in a Koibitz Kol Atoira <clears throat> in uh, the fifty fourth page. Excuse me, in in Chelik Samach Beis in the fifty fourth page. He brings this Malach that there's something meyuchad about the sugi of Erevin, which is no shaykhs to the rest of the Kalatar Kula. What's meyuchad about Erevin? Erevin, he says, and now I'll say it in Tunis Chayis, and it might make enough Kamina, because I saw one Nusikh in the Zer Yaakov, and one Nusikh the way of Avram says it. The Zer Yaakov says, Erevin, the case of the Smicha, of the Meiser Behema, of the Shlomim, is talking, there's a difference between the Chetza and the Gavra, the Kitza. By the case of regular mitzvahs, the gavra has a chiyav to do lulav. He has a chiyav to take answer. He has a chiyav to light the menorah. <clears throat> it's a chiyav on the gavra. So then there's no hafsik because I'm being oisik. I make the bracha. The bracha is the gavra's chiyav. I make a bracha and now I go and I make sure I'm being mekayim my mitzvah, my lulav, my asrik. Therefore, if it takes me time to do it because I thought that this would be a uh, a, a better quality mitzvah. That's all an asik of the gavra. So it's not a stira, it's not a hefsik. And therefore, it's not a problem. <clears throat> Mashain came by the case of Shlomim and Meiser. There, the Meisa of the Tznufa is a din that this hefza requires a Tznufa. This hefza requires a smicha. This animal requires a Tznufa and a smicha. So now, there's maybe two ways you could say this. One way you could say it is, is that so then Avada does a half sick because this animal, it's a din in this animal. So you did a, a misa on this animal, which does not require. So therefore, it's not a din in the gavra, it's a din on the animal. So the animal requires it. So there's a half sick. It's one way of saying it. Maybe with a little bit more avana, <clears throat> the way I saw it from Avavram. Avavram says that at Kamba, that right now being oisik in the misa, which does not require a tnufa, then the animal I'm being oisik in was not mechayiv this mitzvah. It wasn't mechayiv a, 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 a shlam, excuse me, a tznufa, it wasn't mechayiv a smicha. So therefore, there wasn't even the mechayiv at that point. At Kama, that it's the meiser, there was no mechayiv for what I did. Mashen came after what I'm going to do, so now it's a new action. I'll read you his words. He says, Arei b'zman, she mevarech ala smich v'tznufa, harishoyne da'eno adayin oisik b'kiyem mitzvah, when I make the bracha on the smicha on the tznufa rishayna, ain't is not oisik. That animal, the second animal, is mechayiv smicha. I'm not up to the second animal yet, so therefore you don't even have the mechayiv in front of you. Bish the lulav. This moment right now, there's a chiyav for me to be taking lulav. There's a chiyav for me to be taking gesserit. So of course it's on me already. It's already. Um, there's a it's chayiv is on me. Mashein kain at kama. That I'm being oisik in this animal, so there's no schayvis of a tzufli yet. There's no schayvis of a smicha. That's the second mahalach. I'll read you now from the Zer Yaakov in our Chaim Simulam Adalid. He says, "Chilik bein bracha shi al mitzvah shi chayvis gavru bein bracha shi al mitzvah shi mishum chefza." The sipas a chefza is mutal ala adam la soisa. Demi chayvis gavru mutal kafta after the gavru loy mifta loy mifta milir doif achre lekaima. If the chiyav is on the gavru. So then it's your job to get the mitzvah, to be Isaac in the mitzvah. So therefore, there's no Afsik. I'm in the middle of trying to get it. Maybe you can make a bracha and it's not a Afsik. Masha ain't came when it's a, it's not a chiv on the gavra. It's the chevza is mechayiv smicha. So then this chevza that I'm Isaac in right now was not mechayiv smicha. This Rabbi Yisai is the chilik that they make. According to this mahalik Rabbi Yisai, so then kumtois. <clears throat> this is a special halacha only on smicha of a shlomim, only on, on a miser, that this chayfetz is not yet mechayiv a smicha. So therefore, your bracha is a hefzik. <clears throat> if macha'en came on all the other mitzvahs, avadah is a chayiv on the gavra to go and do a mitzvah. So therefore, that's not a hefzik. If you say like that, Rabbi Yisai, you come back, bain the gabe lulav, bain the gabe esrig, sekum tois. That yes, make the bracha on the mother, and I guess 
The Ksav Seifu was a little hard to understand in Svara. So therefore, make the bracha on the Mahodar. And once you make the bracha on the Mahodar, if you're Yoytze, good. If you're not Yoytze, it's an asik of the Gavra <clears throat> to get to the Lulav, to get to the Esrik. Not because, like we explained before, because no matter what, it's Chal Lulav. Even by Lulav. If it is Malach, you'll make the bracha on the Mahodar de Galulav, even according to this Mahalach. And this Abay say, <clears throat> And the Chayra, that's what you come out. The Chayra, it's Talim, the Shnei, it's Tadim. Bein Lulav, Bein Esrik, according to his Mahalach, you'd make the Brach on the Vaday Mahodr. On the on the Mahodr, not on the Vaday Kasha. What about by Hanukkah? Now, this is very interesting. By Hanukkah, I was very misupic. Meaning, it's Pashit if you go with the first Mahalach that we said, then Avada, you make the Brach by the window, you don't want to get involved in the Hasek. According to the second Mahalach that we said, <clears throat> you can clarify. On the one hand, you could say, there's a mitzvah on the gavra to light the licht, to light a menorah. It's a mitzvah on the menorah. It's a mitzvah on the gavra. So therefore, I would say, light down outside, like Rabbi Yashiv, in the most mahotetic fashion. And then afterward, if you aren't right, so you'll go back and be makayim the mitzvah. And it's not a heftig because it's a responsibility of the gavra to light. My only question I was clearing up by size, maybe over here, it could be, you could say deeper, and maybe everyone will agree <clears throat> that you shouldn't light the mahodr first. You should make the bracha on the vada yaitza. I'll explain. First of all, I have a tzad to say, maybe over here, you find that there's two separate mitzvahs. Like we see, there's a mitzvah in Chutz Laretz, and there's a mitzvah in Eretz Yisrael. Two wow. separate mitzvahs. There's a mitzvah for the house, and then there's a mitzvah for the Chutz. So now, I could have heard a svara to say like this. Till now, we've been talking about, it's one mitzvah, it's all the same, it's one lulav, it's one answer. So therefore, do the one that uh, you know, you're 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 getting the hitter because otherwise you won't be able to make kaiyim it afterward. <clears throat> but here, I could have heard a svara that number one, maybe even if I was talking yoytze by lighting inside, whereas vada yoytze because we admit there's like a somewhat of a hefsek, it's just not a hefsek, a significant hefsek. But if I was yoytze inside, I was yoytze the mitzvah at least the the without the. The, the superior mitzvah. I was going to say the mitzvah of lighting a candle on Hanukkah. Now there's a separate type of mitzvah when you can do it perfectly, which is lighting for the piercing of the chutz. So maybe one could say that even if you disagree with the ksav soifer normally, that you can't be mekayim a hider after you mekayim the mitzvah, maybe that's only when it's the exact same mitzvah. But maybe if Chazal gave you two ways to do the mitzvah, dainu, light inside, or be mefarsim it in for the chutz, so there may be taka, I could do that my mitzvah even after I was already yoytze, the first mitzvah. This is a second mitzvah. I'll say even stronger. Abay say, you know, we could hear, it's within the 30 minutes. He lit it. He hasn't finished the mitzvah. He finished maybe his ma'isad loka, but the mitzvah goes for 30 minutes. So I could hear very strong. I could light, and I'm still in the middle of that piercing. I'm still in the middle of the Neir's Hanukkah. And perhaps there'd be a svar to say that I could light inside and then run outside and light it outside. <clears throat> and that, that way there's no hefzik at all because I'm vada yoytze. And I, you're asking, how could you do a hider afterward? Because maybe this is a different type of mitzvah. It's not just a hider. Hider maybe you can't do after. Yeah, but a I'm different type of mitzvah, maybe you could do after, number one. And number two, very possibly, even if you say, no, you can't do a mitzvah once you're yoytze. But I can understand that if we're within the 30 minutes, so then, that's already, the, 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 the Zman of the Mitzvah, I haven't been finished the Mitzvah yet. I haven't even finished my Mitzvah yet. So maybe there is an ability to, to megadal this Mitzvah and to bring out more Pearson. The Oid, and this is what you have to think about, let's go with the Malach of Rav Ram Gervitz, the great Shiva, that here it's Chal of the Chevza, a Chi of Tznufa. So here, I don't have a Chi of Tznufa yet. So the male is Absik. I don't know, maybe you can clear. Maybe the mitzvah of lighting on the outside is a totally different mitzvah than lighting on the inside. So then perhaps you can say that when I'm lighting on the outside, maybe it's Mamash Baruch Levatala. Maybe it's Takit Baruch Levatala. Maybe you don't look at it that it's the Gavra's trying to get the nearest right now. He's trying to do the mitzvah in that chutz type of oifin. But the place where he is isn't being mechayevit. Maybe it's mitzvah to the mokim, kimoi, that the shlomim we saw was the animal, it was Mesiachis right now to a miser and not to a shlomim. And the shlomim yet wasn't being mechayev a tnufa. 
because you didn't get oisik in the shlamim. So maybe you can say the same thing. When I'm on the edge of my gate, maybe my 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 gate is not being mechayim that pierced him to bechutz because I'm in the middle of the I'm in the middle of the street. So maybe this gate is not being mechayiv me because I'm not here bechlal. And maybe until I get to my house, it's not being mechayiv me bechlal. These are the various stadim. <clears throat> and uh, you put that together with the tzad, that anyways, it could be it was only by lulav that we allowed it. So therefore, I noita that when people have this shayla, they should light in the vaday kosher as opposed to in the vaday mahudr, the chayra. Before I continue to the other cases, is that clear, by side? So basically, what the Rav is saying is that the two mitzvahs aside, even under without the svar of the two mitzvahs, in in the chefts of the mitzvah alone, the Rav is arguing with Rav Chaim. Correct. That, that that's what we're understanding. That you're 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 lighting in the in the kosher in the in the. Well, I mean, we're not arguing Rav Chaim. It could be Rav Chaim would agree over here. I mean, agree with Rav Chaim, right? Yeah, Chaim. yeah. Okay, and the two, and the two, and the two mitzvahs are the inside and the outside. Right. And then we have the third, third variable of possibility. I'll make a sikum of all the the svaras in a moment. Svar number one to write inside is simply be, we'll, we'll call inside. We'll call the vaday kosher, vaday vaday yoitzay. <clears throat> Svar number one is maybe Reb Chaim only said it by a lulav, one mahalach. And Rashi and Ervin has the supremacy. According to that, you have to light inside. The second svar is is that even if Rashi and Ervin is a specific svara by Shlamim, because it's a din in the Chefza and the Gavra when it comes to mitzvahs, it's not a hefzik. But when it's a Chefza, it wasn't yet Mechaev, so then that would be a hefzik. So now you can clear. First of all, maybe by Menorah, it's the same thing. Maybe it's Taka. Also, two t- totally different Chefzas, the Chefza of lighting outside, the Chefza of lighting inside. It's two totally types of mitzvahs. And when I'm outside, the mitzvahs of being outside is not being mechayev ad laka yet, because the luck of outside, you're not in a place of a of an outside which is mechayev ad laka according to the to the to that sad. You're not in a excuse me, I'll say it stronger. You're not in a place which is being mechayev a ad laka of an inside type of ad laka. So therefore, it's very possible to say when you're going to light outside, it's a bracha vatala. If the chazanish is right. And what you're doing is nothing. So you're not in a place that's mechaiv ad laka yet. You're not even in a place that's mechaiv ad laka. So what are you doing? So maybe you should light inside. More so, <clears throat> it's very possible that even if not like that, and it is a din in the gavra. But who says this case, except cipher, everyone could possibly agree to? Lighting, norm, doing a mitzvah normally, we'll say once you're yaitzah the mitzvah, you can't do a hider. That's when the mitzvah is a hider on a regular mitzvah. But Mashain Kane, when it's a totally separate type of mitzvah, I can very well hear, do it inside, and do a totally different mitzvah afterward. More so, it's within the 30 minutes. So since it's within the 30 minutes, it's very misdabber to say that even when I am in the middle of uh, my first mitzvah, I could potentially do a better mitzvah. Because you're within the 30 minutes, you haven't yet finished your first mitzvah. So all that together, I would say, I'm very noit uh, that the person should light in the place where he's vada yoitzei. What's the Makar okay. that the Hamshach of the Mitzvah, uh, we know that the Mitzvah, the Maisa Mitzvah has to be, you have to put enough Shemin for the 30. But to, to say that the Hamshach of the Maisa Mitzvah is 30 mit, mit, uh, minutes, what's the right to that? We so, okay, about it's this true mitzvah? that Adlaka is a Mitzvah, and it's true Kab saying Zakikla. And that's a, a stira to what I'm saying, but it's not a stira Be'etzim. It, it shows, the Mitzvah is definitely considered a hamshach a dikah mitzvah. It's 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 that we just say that once you finished your mitza, your yoyt say what you had to do. But that's clear. For example, if a person had das to put it out or something like that, he wouldn't be yoyt say the mitzvah because bisoy that's the tzur of the mitzvah. Anybody have any questions on this? This is of a mukhudish to kusparis. Okay, Hanukkah, you guys aren't used to this kind of stuff for me. But I'll, I'll finish with two cases, what the Oilam should think about, three cases. Well, where's the Marmokim for Avram Gorovitz's uh, Chiddush? The Marmokim is, is in a Koibitz Kola Toira, Chelik Samech Beis. I got it on the Oitzer. Chelik Beis on the 54th page. <clears throat> 62, volume 62. Volume 62. 
It seems to be within volume 62, there's two volumes and it's on the 54th page. Excellent, okay. Now, one last thing <laughs> is just other examples of where this is in Afkamina. Esfira Sa'oyimer is a very famous one. There's a hard Svi about this. In Orchaim, what we mentioned, Similam and Vav, where he brings the famous Shiloh to Dvar Bram. Let's say a person is Mesupik, is tonight the fifth night or tonight the sixth night? So why does he need to say, <laughs> Let him say both. So it's very famous in the rate of Svira Sa'imer. It's not called a Svira. If you're not clear on what you're saying, that's not called counted. It has to have a clarity to it in order to count. Very famous rate. But the Hartsvi, Dan's a different side. He Dan's, wait a minute. How am I going to say, What if tonight is Shishi? So I said, 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 So How did I say, Chamisha, which spalts, which is a half sick between the real thing, which is Shisha, if it's really Shisha. And it would seem, I can't go into the Makarius now, but it would seem that beside, that wasn't bothering the Dvar of Ram, and it wasn't bothering the Ran. <clears throat> so it seemed, Mamish the answer to our Shailo. When you make a bracha and you're trying, we'll say with that Nusif, we'll call it Mitzad Gavra, if you learn that Rashi and Erevin is a exception, and the rule is really you can make a bracha and don't worry about the hefsik because you're trying, so then this makes sense. I'm trying. I said, I did the mitzvah, Yoyim Chamisha, that's the mitzvah, and that's a, not a hefsik because I'm trying. Mashing, <clears throat> if you learn that no, bad mitzvah, other we're worried about a hefsik, so then of course this is a problem. That'll be another nafkamino. Another nafkamino will be shoifer. In shoifer, Rabbi Isai, we know that there's a big muck like it's what exactly, how did the mother of Sisra cry? Did she cry? Hey, hey, hey. That's a shvarim. Did she cry a trua? <laughs> like that. Or did she cry a shvarim trua? <laughs> like that. So we don't know what to do. And every shvarim has a tkia, every trua has a tkia before and a tkia after. So we do tashat, tarat, tashvat. So shayla is, is that l'chayra? But on Rosh Hashanah, we make a bracha. <clears throat> And then right after we blow. Wait a minute, you just blow the Tashrat. Now, according to Sami Shainim, anything you blow is okay. But according to Sami Shainim, it's not true. You have to blow the one that she blew. <clears throat> so what do we do? We blow them all. What are you gaining by blowing them all? Bishlama, if you didn't make a bracha, good. But how do you make a bracha? Maybe when you're doing Tashrat, she didn't cry Tashrat. Maybe she cried Tashat, Tashat, Tashat. How do you do Tashrat, 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 and then after we do Tashat, Tashat? Maybe the way she cried was Tashat, Tashat, Tashat. So how do we let you do this? So Bishma, if you learn that Rashi and Erevin is an exception, and that normally we don't care as long as you're trying, but then it's very good, the Minigoyim. Then, 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 have Seikim, don't bother us. But if you learn the other way, you learn that really have Seikim do bother us, so then this is a problem. And it seemed that that's a riot to the Minigoylam. Another shayla you can clear. What if you have a mezuzah? <clears throat> you have a door, which is vada yoitse, excuse me, vada chiv mezuzah. And you have another door, which is a suffix chiv mezuzah. Sach oira, lach oira. Some want to say, you must make the bracha on the vada before you make the bracha on the suffix. What's an afkamina? That's what we do anyways, right? But what if I'm holding the mezuzahs in my hand and I'm standing closer to the suffix door? I have in front of me a door like, uh, you know, as everyone knows that when you have a doorway without a door, you don't make a bracha. Mm -hmm. Because it's a suffix if it gets a, a bracha or not. So we don't make a bracha. Okay. Suffix if it has a chiyam mezuzah. So now let's say I'm standing by my living room, which is the entrance, without a door. And I want to go and put one on the front door. So I'm allowed to pass through the living room and go to the door with the doorway and make the bracha on the vadai. And that's the minig. You make the bracha on the vadai and you pater the suffix. What? Why? Why? Right now I have in front of me a mitzvah. Just make the bracha on the suffix. And you'll, after it in a second from now, you'll put it on the vadai. Elamai, it would seem nakamul. We, uh, we don't like doing this. We don't like making these of seikim. It seems that the fidat malik, rashi, in Erevin is a klau, not just a, an exception. And this is something you can clear and you can be the more and more.
<clears throat> there was another shot they wanted to get to, but it seems like we're out of time. But that Shaila, you can find. The Rav, the Rav can go a minute or two over time. Go ahead. I can go. I'll just I'll say over the Shaila, but this Shaila. That's, so we have, uh, the reason, we have mezuzah. What's the third Shaila? No, there's mezuzah. There's also Tfilas Kalim. There's also Tfilas Kalim. What if you have a Kli, which Vaday requires a Tfila, and one does the suffix requiring a Tfila? Or I don't know if it was Toivled at all. So there's a Tzad, it wasn't Toivled at all. And there's one that was Vaday requires a Toivled. <clears throat> Sometimes you can make it even more exciting. You don't know which one is the one that was toivled. You don't know which is one is the one that isn't toivled. How do you make a bracha? All this will be totally in these shilas. There's a shila by Egla Rufa, Chaim Kenevsky, in the Sefer Nachal Eisan, in Simeon Gimel, in Siv Zayin, in Siv Katin Gimel, in Nachal Eisan. He has a case of where an Egla Rufa got mixed with about uh, you know a bunch of other Eg- agolas, and over there we can't start. No, we can't start. Uh, uh, you know. What are we going to do? Start killing them all? So first of all, there's no bittol because it's a Dabr Chashiv. So Chayim Gineski over there has a Gansa Clare. Can I make the bracha? We're going to hack them all. We're going to be oyer for all of them because one of them is the Agra Rufa. So Chayim says, but how do I make the bracha? So Chayim writes, V'yachal avarech al richpa, v'kavin al ezeshu agel al rufa, have the kavana on whichever is the right one, and it's not a hefsik. Masha oyerif, acherim misafik, and he brings down, like we find by Tfilin of Rashi and Rebbein Utam, Ubilvat Shilo Yafsik Vidiber. <clears throat> but then, in that's all, Rechaim Kenyaski, when he wrote Nachal and he was much younger. Later on, right, after he had learned Kalatar Kula another 70 million times, so in the Tikunim and Haisafas, in the Tzach in page 249, he writes, Sarachi and Rashi Erevin, Dafnunam and Aleph, Einam Evarech HaSmicha V'atnufa, the Chaira, Rashi Zepela, Yochel Evarech, Dubat Smichas, Bezeh HaZeh, and what's the problem? So he said, No, Shem Avairi, Dafke Boifin, Shishtem, Einam Zumanim, maybe Rashi, he wants to say, maybe Rashi's talking about that, they're not both in front of him. But you see, you can declare this Shaila Rabbi Yisai, in Nile Plats, in all the places you can declare this Shaila. I'll just end with one shayla that I have un- unrelated, but I didn't know if we would have time for it. I wouldn't have time for it. But Rabbi Gadisman has a Nagi on this one. It's in the Yashurin, in the 18th volume, in the 677th page. Over there is a shayla. You all know the famous shayla. Ner Chanukah, Ner Shabbos. So we say Shabbos, Ner Shambayis is on this. So if he only has a choice of one, if he only has the ability to have one candle, we say you take that candle and use it for Shabbos because Ner Hanukkah is not as choshiv as Shalom Bayis and that they shouldn't trip on the floor. Shalom Bayis is on this. is Okay. Come to gain Raveli Baruch Finkel, Zeichot Tzadik Levracha. And I was Zeichot to hear it from his mouth. <clears throat> but come to gain Raveli Baruch Finkel. And he wrote a beautiful shtick on the Yishur, and he said he asked this question to all the G'daylam, and one of them was Reb Moshe Zechot Tzadik Levracha. And he asked him like this. He asked him, here I am, I'm on a Friday, I'm a poor Yid, a Yishalayim Yid, and I have no money, and I have no candles, and all I have is my shirt on my back. And now, I come to the Rav Yishalayim, I Rav, I Zugim, Vuz Tutmin Yetzt, Habich Nar, Bissel Kleid, I have a shirt, and I don't have a Ner Chanukah, and I don't have a Ner Shabbos. So the Shlaim Rav will tell him, okay, look, you have a shirt. Where I come from, it says in Shulchan Arach, Ner Chanukah, Moichren Afilu Ksus. You have to sell your shirt for the Ner Chanukah. So I zoom him, okay. So you go sell your shirt so you can have Ner Chanukah. He says, but Rebbe, 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 if I sell my shirt, and then what? I buy the Ner Chanukah? Yeah, vada. It's like the way, wait, but it's Arab Shabbos. I also don't have Ner Shabbos. Okay, so I guess you'll take your Ner Chanukah that you bought, and now you're going to have to use it for Ner Shabbos. So he says to the Rav, Rebbe, Rebbe, but Ner Hanukkah, you have to sell your shirt to buy Ner Hanukkah. But it doesn't say, or at least it's Meduyik in the Rambam, that you don't have to sell your shirt for a Ner Shabbos. And Rav Eli Baruch explains, because that would be a bit of a Shabbos. So it doesn't say that I have to sell my shirt for the Ner Shabbos. So how could this be? I don't have to sell my shirt for the Ner Shabbos. I do have to sell my shirt for the Ner Hanukkah. So now I come to the Rav, he says, sell your shirt and buy Ner Hanukkah. Okay, great. But now I bought Ner Chanukah, Ner Chanukah, Ner Shabbos, Ner Shabbos is Adif. So that means I had to sell my shirt for the Ner Shabbos. How could I have to sell my shirt for the Ner Shabbos? I never had to sell my shirt for the Ner Shabbos. So Valley Baruch says there's three options. One option is, is that uh, you won't be able to. So therefore, Potter, because it can't be. Since 
There's nothing being mechai of me to sell my shirt for near Shabbos. And if I'll have a near Hanukkah, I'll have to use it for near Shabbos. So you don't have to sell your shirt. One option. A second option, he says, is you'll sell the, the, the excuse me, you'll, you'll sell your shirt, you'll buy a near Hanukkah, and you know what? You won't have to buy with that Ner Kanika on Ner Shabbos. You won't have to trade it for a Ner Shabbos. You know why? Because it's Hagbala in the din of Ner Hanika, Ner Shabbos, Ner Shabbos is Adif. It's only at Kama that I have enough. But licked in the Allah of selling your shirt was the, the din to sell your shirt for the Ner Hanika, but not for the Ner Shabbos. It's a nice din for, you have to have for that. Yeah, it's a nice for right? You have to have Makar as a Hagbala. Yeah. Hagbala. And the third Mahalik that he says, the Ravelli Baruch, as he says, he says, this part is a big chiddish. He said, the G'doylem weren't masking to this side. He said, yes, you'll have to sell it for the Ner Hanukkah. And then after you'll sell it for the Ner Hanukkah, yes, you'll have to trade the Ner Hanukkah in for the Ner Shabbos. He says, these are the three stadim. He said, the G'doylem weren't masking to the third side. Pshay. Rishlam Zalman and Ali Shloima. This Kanira came out maybe after the Yeshurin in Hanukkah, Perak Gimel, or Lamed Hay. He says, you should buy a Ner Hanukkah and in this case, there's no din of Ner Shabbos. You buy in Ner Hanukkah, and there's no din Ner Shabbos. Okay. Now, I must tell you one thing before we continue. I'm only going to continue for two more minutes. Is that all this is based on a dig in the Rambam. The Bir Lacha argues on this. The Bir Lacha says the Shailah doesn't start. The Bir Lacha, based on a Prima Godim, says you have to sell your shirt for Ner Shabbos too. So according to that, obviously, there's no Shailah. Rav Eli Baruch asked this question to Rav Moshe, Zechotarek Levracha, and he said, I tried to ask Rav Moshe the Shailah, and he wouldn't listen. He said, it's not Negea, because today we have electricity. So therefore, you're not, uh, don't worry about it. You're not selling Ner Hanukkahs for Ner Shabbos, don't worry. So he said to Ramosha, ah, he said, Rebbe, in Eretz Yisrael, the electricity is treif. As I decide, there's no Tzach Eden that they don't use electricity. So the Shiloh is Negea. So Ramosha said, ah, I decide, I'll down the Shiloh. What was the Shiloh? So he repeated the Shiloh. This is all brought in the assurance. So he says, so Ramosha, on the spot, on the spot, Ramosha said, the third sad, the sad that all the Gdoilim said not to say. The Goyen Rav Moshe, off in art, he said, I'll read you his Lashen, Hey Shiv Marn Alatar, on the spot, Kitzad Ashlishi, Vadai Uchayev Limko Yavada, I have to sell your shirt to buy the Ner Hanukkah, and Beregi, you sell your shirt for the Ner Hanukkah, Choyz of Nei, you're at the Ner Hanukkah, Ner Shabbos, Ner Shabbos Koyidim. As I was saying, now you have a lot of what to talk about tonight at the candles, Rabbi Isai. <clears throat> Where do you light? By the Hidder or by the Vadai, you would say. And the next shot I have to talk about is Ner Shabbos, Ner Hanukkah. Which one is Adif? Is Zichr the Ner Shabbos is Adif? But if I only have a shirt and I have to sell my shirt, is my shirt going to enable, going to of you to sell your shirt in order to buy Ner Hanukkah, which Mimela is going to of you to buy with that a Ner Shabbos? That was the Psak of the Goyen Rav Moshe Feinstein on the spot.